Okay, we are going to do it. All right, here we go. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I just wanted to sit down and talk to you. Um, I have wanted to do this for quite some time, and I know it's almost like a trend right now in the beauty community to sit down and like tell your truth or just share your thoughts and opinions. This might be similar to that, but more than anything, I just have some things I really need to address. And it's not even necessarily me getting something off my chest, but more me just connecting with you guys on a personal human level. I've always said that I think of you guys like friends, and as of recently, I haven't really treated you like one. And so I just wanna sit down and be completely real and raw and transparent, which I feel like is a very difficult thing to do, especially in the beauty community. Um, everyone kind of feels like they have their hands tied behind their back or like, you know, their mouths taped shut and everyone is so scared to like name drop maybe, you know, or just like be honest or real. And then not to mention when you're in like brand collaborations, you've got contracts and NDAs and you know, YouTube is a big business, whether people want to believe it or not. And also at the end of the day, it's like everyone wants to be liked, you know? No one wants people to talk crap about them. You know, they don't want to see mean videos and hurtful comments put out there about them. But that's not what's gonna happen today. I am honestly going into this nervous, yes, but like no real fear. I want to just be so honest with you and talk to you about what has been going on recently, not in my personal life, um, but what's been going on in my career and just address some things that I think that I owe to you guys and you guys just, you deserve to hear. First thing that I wanna address is my vault, my vault collection with Morphe. So I'm just gonna start off by saying that there have been inconsistencies, inconsist, inconsistencies in the production. And just putting that out there, just first and foremost. Um, I talked to Linda and Morphe, I talked to them every single day, honestly, about what's going on. And they have given me full permission just to be as honest and transparent as I want here on camera with you guys. And they're like, just tell the truth and let it all out, which is freaking awesome. So the first thing is people are getting palettes that are not having good pigmentation and not swatching well. First of all, let me just say that this news broke my heart. It does not matter what I feel. What matters is you guys are spending your money on a palette and it should be exactly what I say, what Morphe says. It should be what we promise. And I have always prided myself in putting out great products. You know, I, I, I have worked so long and so many years on stuff and been like, the reason that this took 187 years is because I had to make it perfect. So the fact that there were inconsistencies in this palette, even after we pushed the first launch back, it sucked, it sucked big time. And I just wanna put it out there right now, don't you ever think for one second that I have been blowing this off, not paying attention, or me and Morphe are just like <laughs> laughing our way to the bank about this. Like this has been a major stress ever since the second I got the first negative review. The first time that I saw someone say like, oh, mine is patchy, I was like, mm-hmm. Like I'm just gonna be real. I was like, okay, like there's being a hater because these are bomb, right? I'm gonna take my emotions out of this and how I feel because like I said, not important. Um, so basically, we pushed back the launch date. We saw all over social media, beauty influencers were giving it negative reviews. Some people were giving it positive reviews, some were giving it negative. Overall, not good. We went in, we swatched hundreds, and we found inconsistencies, pretty major inconsistencies. So we were like, what? But what do we do, right? So Linda came to me and told me, like, I am choosing to push back the launch. She came to me and was like, there's inconsistencies. I swatched them with my team. I've been watching the reviews for the past 24 hours. It's bad. We're pushing it back. Of course, we cried. It was this whole thing. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is going to be a huge scandal. Like, I'm disappointing people. Once again, like, here Jaclyn Hill goes, like, putting something out that it's just gonna cause like an uproar and I'm already under a microscope for everything I do. Like I'm gonna disappoint my subscribers. I'm gonna make them think that I'm not trustworthy. And like, I was just like so sad that I was doing that to you guys. But also thankful, very thankful that they were willing to push it back. Pushing back the launch cost them millions of dollars and it was a very big hit for Morphe. So that was like, they really showed and they proved to me like who they are as a brand and I thought that was really cool. So I did tell you guys that Every single old palette from like the bad batch, if you will, was destroyed. I was wrong. That is what I was told, but it ended up not being the case. 
the real truth is that it has been quarantined. It has been moved to a completely different warehouse. It was moved to a different warehouse before any new shipment came in from China and shipped to Los Angeles, but it is gone. Like they said, there was not one shadow, not one pallet left in that entire warehouse. I am obsessed with this right now. So I'm just trying to deliver you guys the most accurate information possible about it. So as of right now, I don't know if it's still like this moment, but as of like a week ago or so, the pallets were in quarantine still and they have not destroyed them because at this moment they're analyzing these pallets, trying to get to the bottom of what happened and what went wrong and why such a huge amount were inconsistent. In the end of the day, the old pallets are not being sold, which leads me to the next subject, which is this whole V2 thing on the back of boxes in the back of pallets. You guys are seeing batch codes and then you are seeing a production code which says V2 on it. And everyone is posting pictures saying, I didn't get the V2, I didn't get the version two. That means that mine isn't good, that means mine's bad. Even though people are getting pallets that don't have V2 written on the back and they're beautiful and they're creamy and they're pigmented and they're buttery and they're blendable. People are so upset because they think that V2 means version two. That is not what it means. So I personally spoke to the senior vice president of global operations at Morphe and talked to him on the phone and asked him like, explain to me, break this down to me. Because you have to understand again, as a collaborator, I'm not involved and no one is involved in things like batch codes and production codes. You're involved in swatching the shades and saying, this is the color I want. This is the formula I want. This is the packaging I want. This is the marketing idea. This is the design. This is the layout. That's what you do as a collaborator. You're not over in the actual lab. Like, printing batch codes on things. So I was confused just like you and I'm like, okay, immediately when I see this, I'm like, what does V2 mean, right? So he explained to me that the first 15% of the pallets don't have a V2 after it because they just don't. But after the first 15%, they all start to have a V2 because they realize that they're gonna have to mark it down. So there is one with no V2, there's one with V2, and there's also some that are coming out as of this moment with V3, V4, and V5. So it does not mean version two. I guess you could say it stands for like, Vault 2, Vault 3, Vault 4, Vault 5, but the ones that don't have it are not old batches. And I'm going to be real, if I was you guys, I probably wouldn't believe me. Like, I'm just being honest. And, like, there is a moment where I didn't believe them. And I'm, like, questioning everything because I'm like, oh, my God, like, am I being lied to right now? Linda would never lie to me. She would never, ever lie to me. And Linda has been, like, investigating this right alongside of me. Like, we're in the CIA. Like, we have gone above and beyond to get to the bottom of this. And that's that's where it's at. We are not selling you old, nasty vaults. But I will say they are reusing packaging. You will see that like on some boxes, there's like stickers over top of it because the packaging was really expensive on this collection and because they ordered so much, they were using the packaging, which isn't anything like controversial or weird. Like companies do this all the time. It's very common. So you guys can see that like some of the boxes, like they're being reused and like there's stickers on them and stuff like that. Now I will say 95% of the reviews that I am seeing are positive, which is great. But me being who I am, I am focused on the 5% negative. There can be a sea of good comments, but that one comment, I'll just be like, crap, like I'm a terrible person, you know, like I did something to fuck up, you know? And so I'm definitely focused on the negative because I want to make it right for you guys. And this is why I've been on the phone with Morphe so much because we're trying to figure out a way to make this right. And at the end of the day, I do not know why there are inconsistencies in this collection still. And it kills me. I'm not going to sit here and cry. I absolutely refuse. That's not going to happen in today's video. And if I do, I will edit it out. I am not going to sit here and cry on camera. So I do just want to share with you guys a little bit of like from my perspective of what's going on and why I haven't come forward and talked about this earlier. Um, just to kind of bring you into my world of pinch because it's really easy to forget like, oh, these people have lives off of camera and even though we'll be like, okay, now we're putting out a green smoky eye. It's like when I turn off the camera, I deal with real life shit just like you guys. So even though I'm not talking about it on social media, I'm still dealing with it. I'm still losing sleep over it. I'm still working on it. Um, so I wanna bring you guys into my life a little bit. And the most difficult thing as of recently with this vault collection has been the outpour of just lies. On social media about this collection and I would like never want to say that in the past but at this point I'm just like this is the truth I have DMs to prove it I have emails to prove it I'm not gonna show them I'm not gonna like leak them and put out anyone's name out there and make them look bad whatsoever put anyone on blast it is what it is but I cannot tell you how many people have tweeted saying my palette sucks. It is so patchy. It is so dry. It is so unblendable. I can't believe you did this. You are so fake. Jacqueline, who will do anything for Money Hill. Like, 
above and beyond. And I will reach out to them personally through DM and be like, I am so sorry that you are unhappy with your palette. Like, please let me send you another one and hopefully it'll be better. I don't know what happened. I'm working on this with Morphe and I am not kidding. Every single person, every person that I have DM'd has responded back to me except one girl and I'll talk about her in a second has responded back to me and been like, oh, don't worry about it. Now that I tried it on my eyes, it's actually really beautiful and I really like it. Sorry, girl, you're doing amazing. Keep doing your thing. This is what makes it difficult because it's like I'm trying to figure out what the issue is so that I can go yell at Morphe about it and be like, let's figure this out. But when I'm trying to investigate on social media and people are just clearly putting things out there to get attention and their tweet starts blowing up and they start getting, you know, tons and tons of feedback. And then when I reach out to them, they're like, oh no, it's actually totally good. Like what? I've had people show swatches on Twitter. They're like crappy swatches. And I'm like, what's going on? Can I get your batch code? Can I get your production code? Like, you know, I, I want to help you. I want to fix this for you. And they'll come back and they'll be like, oh, don't worry. Now that I like scraped off the top layer, it's beautiful and I love it now. There has literally not been one person out there, not one, who has accepted me sending them a new ball. Not one. So a couple of days ago, I called Linda and I was like, hey, I want to know how many, like, I want to know how many vaults have actually been returned at this point. Like, I don't know what the percentage is because... I am very stressed about this. Like how many people are getting bad palettes and like inconsistent palettes? Like what's going on? What palettes is it specifically? Like I need to know. Morphe came back with like actual stats and only 1% of vaults have been returned. 1%. And the majority of them have been exchanged, not even returned for money back. Morphe personally, like Morphe stores and Morphe online have had 102 returns. That's it. The industry standard is 5%. So to see something so low, it's like, okay, but I'm seeing people complain online and I want to get to the bottom of it, but yet only 1% has been returned? Like, ah. Uh. And then when I'm reaching out to people through DMs and emails and then they're telling me, oh no, don't worry, like it's all good now, it's working great. I'm like, from my end, it's difficult because I want to fix this and I want to make it right. So. Like Morphe said, you know, like at the end of the day, we are offering full refunds for anybody who does not like it. We encourage people to contact us and get their full money back. And there was a rumor going around online and I saw it everywhere. I called Morphe freaking out. I'm like, is this true? Because people were saying that they called customer service and they told them if you have swatched your palette or opened it, it can't be returned. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, who? Like, that's that's bullshit you know like if you're unhappy with your product and i have my name on it you damn well better be able to return it and that's just that so i talked to them and they were like absolutely not like you can return and get a full refund if you've used your product and it's not what you expected it to be and it's not performing well you can return it and get a full refund like they stand beside that so again if you guys are unhappy with anything if you got a palette that you don't like that is inconsistent that's not blending properly please 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 contact the Morphe team, contact customer service through email, through phone, get your refund, get your money back, do whatever you want to do, replace it, whatever you want, get credit. Like I just want you guys to be happy. That's all I care about. I know you guys, not you guys. And I say that that's rude of me to say you guys in general don't feel this way, but people who don't like me and they're just picking me apart. They love to say like all Jacqueline cares about is money. It's like, I'll be honest, just being totally real and transparent. I don't even know how much money I've made off of this. Honest to God. I have no clue. I have no clue. If I cared about just making money, I wouldn't spend like over two years on my Jaclyn Hill palette. I wouldn't stay awake at night swatching shit. Like, let me show you guys this right here. Let me show you what's behind the camera. Ah! I literally look like Gus Gus right now bringing all these in. And this isn't even close to being all of it. And these stacks are much higher than the camera is actually showing them to be. They come much further down. I am dedicated to swatching these vaults and figuring out the issue. It is an embarrassment for me to have inconsistencies in a product that I have spent so much time and put so much heart into. And that is not because of money or my bank account or me not being able to buy a new Birkin. That is because of my subscribers. You guys, <laughs> I've always been a happy girl, 
but being able to get on camera and connect with you guys and leave my house and meet you guys and have a conversation with you guys and you walk up to me and say, I'm wearing your highlight, I'm wearing your products, I'm wearing your eyeshadow, I love this, it's incredible, it's my favorite. You will never know how much that means to me. I am so damn thankful for you guys and I think of my product as another way to give back to you the happiness and the joy and the freedom that you have given to me and I am forever grateful for that opportunity. So the fact that these are not absolutely perfect, it, it makes me very sad and I am so sorry if you are unhappy with something that I have put out. But please get a refund, exchange it, do something, whatever it takes to make you happy Please do it. Okay, I'm getting really hot. Hold on, I'm like all worked up, hot and bothered. Let me show you how these palettes are supposed to swatch. This is a brand new one. I just opened it yesterday. There's no V2 anywhere on the back, just so you know. It's a great palette right here. This is the Dark Magic palette. I will swatch it with a brand new clean brush on camera. I will not cut the footage so that you can see me do the entire thing, okay? I'm rubbing it in there. And, oh, ow, it's hurt my nail. And then, Sorry, my spray tan looks terrible. It's rubbing off and I just haven't cared. And it's just, it's a mess. Um, but right here, this is how the palette should be swatching for you guys with a light layer. And that is the shade Potion, which is like that mustard matte green. And then if I go over it with a little bit more, you should see how it does build up and give you nice pigmentation, smooth, and an even blend. So now that I feel like I have covered like all the bases of the vault issues of what you guys are talking about on social media, I hope that I have answered your questions. Um, I wanna move on to something else, but first, just closing that chapter off, I do want to apologize to you guys for making you feel in any way like I have been shoving Morphe down your throat recently. I have seen these comments quite a lot on social media recently. It's been the number one comment that I have seen and I completely, I completely get it. Like I even spoke to Linda last week and I was like, after I get this video up, I gotta, I gotta take a break. You know, like I have to take a, not from YouTube or social media, but from Morphe. I was like, I know that we just launched this, but like I have to walk away from Morphe for a minute and like just get back to makeup because it's what my subscribers and my following want. You know, people have been telling me that they don't want to watch my videos anymore. They're not excited for my videos anymore, you know, or they're unsubscribing because of it. And I completely get it. I do not blame you. Um, I actually took a step back and looked over my past few videos and I'm like, mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's just been a lot. And when I come to YouTube, I have not used that as like my escape like I normally do. Instead, I come to YouTube and I've been thinking about it more as a job. And that is my fault. And I used to think about it as like a fun place to be and a hobby and like, I would use it to escape. Like, I'm so stressed. Like, let me go film something fun that makes me feel good, you know? Um, and I haven't been doing that. I've just been coming to YouTube like, okay, I gotta do this. Like, this is what I signed up for. This is my job. I have to do it, you know? And I lost that, and that's not cool of me. You know, I got wrapped up, and I am very thankful for those of you who bring me back to earth and just kinda like slap my bitch ass around, and you're like, yo, what are you doing? Like, enough with the Morphe. We want something else. Like, I appreciate that from you guys. Um, and then on top of it, I also hired an editor and you guys are definitely picking up on it. You're like, something feels different, something feels different. And the editing is definitely a little bit different, but more than anything, it's me, because I know that my footage is going to an editor and I'm not gonna edit it myself, I hold back. And I'm not like, I don't like fully speak my mind and my heart and I'm not as silly on camera, I'm not myself. I kind of just like sit down and I'm like, like I do my thing, I'm like, okay, bye. Cause like, it's awkward. I need to get over that and just like break out of my shell again and just be me because I can tell that you guys are seeing that. And sorry if I'm touching my hair so much. I know everyone's like, stop touching your hair! Especially when I have an extensions, I'm like, it's so annoying. And when I watch my videos as I'm editing, I'm like, stop! Okay, so one more thing that I wanna to touch base on before I close out this video. I know this video is a long one, you guys. I know, I apologize. There has been a lot of conversation all over social media the past couple of days about a collaboration that went south for me several years ago. Um, this happened about two and a half, three years ago, in between there, that's the timeline. And it has just recently come to the surface. So some of you got, I'm sure the majority of you probably don't even know what I'm talking about, but I'm still gonna address it because this is one of those things where it's like, um, especially as of recently, I don't let like lies and like hate get to me, if you will. And like I see the gossip channels and the drama and honestly, I'll be real with you guys. Some gossip channels, I'm like, oh yeah, that's actually true. Like, even if I don't want it to be true, if it's about me or someone I know on social media, I'll be like, ooh, shit, like, that's true. Um, I will say mm, 85 to 90% of these gossip channels that I watch every once in a while, because I really can't get caught up in it. Like, 
I really can't. People are like, oh, I know you watch all those videos. I really don't because it will get to you. Even if it doesn't, it will get to you. It will put you in a bad, dark place. So I really stay away from it. But when I do watch videos, the majority of the time, I'm laughing or I'm pissed because I'm just like, this is such crap. Like there's just so many assumptions and like stuff just taken so much out of context. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the past year I've been really good at not addressing any of it. Cause I'm just like, whatever. I have learned that there's more important things in life than people talking crap about me. I'm like, if that's your daytime job is to talk bad about somebody else, girl, do you like, I'm not even going to try to argue with you because it's not my journey. But the stuff that's been circling around about me the past couple of days, especially has just been like too much. And it's like, come now, this is getting ridiculous. So basically, long story short, some emails have been leaked. I say leaked because I don't even know if these emails are legit because I personally have searched the internet high and low and cannot find a copy of these emails. So I don't know. I can't confirm anything. I've heard other people say like, oh, well, it's been confirmed. And I'm like, by who? This is pertaining a collaboration that I was in the works of doing with Makeup Geek Cosmetics. You guys probably know who Marlena is. She's Makeup Geek's owner, CEO, extremely successful businesswoman. I am not going to sit here and talk about personal stuff whatsoever. I respect the hell out of Marlena. She was one of the first people I ever started watching on YouTube. She's one of the people who inspired me to start YouTube. She has been nothing but kind, honestly, to me. Um, and we have had our conversations about our personal relationship with one another, and that's where it needs to remain. I am not going to sit here and spill tea. That's not my journey whatsoever, and it never has been. I like to keep personal things personal. I'm just that kind of girl. So I just want to say right now that Marlena has done nothing wrong. I am not angry at her. I am not talking shit about her. I am not shading her whatsoever. This is business 100% percent she made a video talking about the beauty community in general it's a pretty good video and I agree with a lot of the stuff that she said in it people decided to assume that it was about me because I think the day before or two days before that or whenever it was a gossip channel got a hold of something along this line and started talking about it and I will be honest there are some things in there that are kind of accurate but more than anything I watched it kind of like this like what it's like the game of telephone. It gets changed as it goes down the line. And I feel like that's what happens a lot. It's like people in the drama community, like, yeah, like I think that's what it's called, the drama community, like the drama channels. The drama channels, like someone will have a pretty accurate piece of information and then they'll tell someone and then they'll tell someone and it gets to the drama channel. And by the time it gets to the drama channel, it's been filtered through just like this strainer of bullshit. And by the time it gets to them, it's like there's 5% accuracy in it. And the rest is like, huh? And it, always 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 seems for some reason <laughs> that it is always against the influencer so I'm just saying I take their videos with a grain of salt and you guys should too and I'm not even saying that because I'm not saying they're liars I'm saying that they are misled a lot of the times I think and they don't even personally know it so anyways I know that I'm like going on a rant now about drama channels and all of this I just want to say right now before anybody comes for me, I do not hate drama channels. Um, it's not something that I would personally ever do with my career, but I do not hate them. I don't sit around and talk shit like, oh my God, like, no, like that's their thing. They're honestly, that's their business. That is their business. They sit around talking bad about us for a business. That's how they get their paycheck. So very quickly, I'm just going to tell you guys what actually happened between me and Makeup Geek professionally, okay? We were working on a collaboration. We were gonna do an eyeshadow palette that was nine different shades. A couple of them were gonna be shades that Makeup Geek already sold, and a couple of them were gonna be shades that I custom created. It was an all neutral palette, and I was very, very excited about it. I had signed a contract with Morphe and with Becca, and I was already in collaboration with the both of them. I had already launched Champagne Pop, and I was about to launch my Morphe palette. No, that's a lie, I'm so sorry. I was not about to launch my palette with Jacqueline, like the JH2. I thought I was going to, but it kept getting pushed back further and further and further and further and further because I was being such a picky asshole. So I was already in contract with both Becca and Morphe at this time though. Manny was also collaborating with Makeup Geek as well. And as you guys know, he released a product with them. Um, so we were trying to figure out like the timeline of me and Manny and our palettes coming out and us both having enough time because no influencer ever wants to like have their product launch. And then like three weeks later, 
another big influencer launches their product with the same brand too, you know? Cause then you're just kind of like sales are being competed and people are like, Oh, I don't have enough money for both. So like brands always try to stretch out like the period in between collaborations for obvious reasons. Right? So they're trying to sort that out. And I was trying to sort out when I was going to launch with makeup geek because of the fact that I had a big launch with Becca coming up, which was my face palette. And I also had the Jaclyn Hill palette coming out with Morphe, which were two big things. Again, I was already in contract for. So, People are saying all over the internet that I'm such a bitch because I flaked on her and then she finally canceled it and she called it off because I wasn't responding to emails and I refused to sign the contract. There's so much BS out there about this. And I've apologized to Marlena about all of this and if I've ever hurt her feelings, you know, in our personal conversations. I've asked her, is there something I can do to make this right for you, you know? But at the end of the day, the collaboration just didn't make sense. For business-wise, it didn't make sense. So I have an email sitting in front of me right here and I'm gonna read it to you guys, okay? I'm not gonna read you anything that Marlene or her team ever sent to me because that's not my place. And I don't wanna make this into like a he said, she said thing. I just want you guys to know where I was coming from in this because I am sick of everyone having misinformation out there. So this email dated on August 19th, 2015 says, I totally understand. Air costs are so expensive. At the same time, the public doesn't care about air costs and we can't explain that to them, which is so frustrating. I'm just being 100% honest with you and upfront because I know my audience. If we drop the price, it will sell within two months, I'm sure. At blank dollars, I'm not gonna say the price because I just don't want to, I just don't want to. I don't think it's necessary. The collaboration didn't happen. And if Makeup Geek has lowered their prices since then or up their price or whatever, I'm not gonna sit here and say this was the price of my palette and you know, and whatever. I just don't wanna say it. So I'm blurring it out. But I said, at blank dollars, it may sit around for six to eight months, which I can't do that because I have signed a contract with Morphe to launch a palette in December, and we are now trying to push it back since this palette got pushed back. Then I go on to say, I am wondering how you feel about putting this project on hold and launching Manny's palette first and then launching mine in spring, or I could be in the beginning of next year and Manny could be spring. Since this has been so delayed, it's honestly giving me anxiety because I signed my contract with Morphe months ago and I have been working on our collab for a very long time. It was supposed to be a holiday launch and now I feel like the Makeup Geek palette and Morphe palette are going to cross paths and it's gonna be a mess for all of us. Then I say, these are just my current thoughts. I'm trying to find a way to add less stress for everyone. I hope I don't stress you out with this, but I think that if we keep trying to move forward at a fast pace and spend blank amount on air shipping, it's going to be a mess. Please bounce your thoughts back at me. First of all, my grammar in this email, I can't. Like I can tell that I wrote this three years ago because I'm like, honey, you need to fix this right now. Um, but there, that is what that email said. And the reason I'm reading this one to you is because this was the issue. This was the issue that led to the end. Right here, it is laid out. I went through every single email pretty much over the past couple of days because I really wanted to find like the best thing to show you guys like where I was at in this moment and this was it. I also have one more that is extremely short and previous to this, her business partner just told me that they've got so much going on right now in the warehouse with like new launches and new products and he just said like, you know, I'm really stressed out right now because there's just so much going on. So I started out the email by saying, ugh, I'm sorry. Hopefully pushing this palette back will come as a relief. Again, I can still do it in 2015, but it would need to be by mid-October by the latest. So I just want you guys to know that I was in it and I was excited. I wanted to do it. I wanted to stay on schedule. I wanted to launch this palette. I thought it was great. At the time, I was makeup geek obsessed. And we had not signed a contract yet. And I told them like, we can do it, but we gotta do it now because my contract states that like, I, you, you can't, <sighs> I can't talk about specifics and contracts with specific brands and specific names. But in general, most brands, almost every single brand, when you sign a contract with them, they will state like, you can't work with another company for six months. You know, you can't put out another product similar to this for two years, whatever it may be. That's just standard and not just in this industry and in basically every industry, that's just how it is. Um, so I was very anxious because I had too much on my plate, you know, and Morphe and Becca were so far along. And then when I found out the price they're going to charge, I was just like, well, crap, because this is, these are nine eyeshadows and the price for nine eyeshadows was fairly more expensive than my 35 shadows with Morphe. And I was like, this is a terrible look. If I've got this palette over here, 35 colors for such an incredible price, and at the same time I've got a nine color palette with a different brand for even more than the 35 color palette, they're gonna be like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like I just thought that it was gonna make me and Makeup Geek both look stupid, and I thought it was gonna piss off my subscribers. Like I didn't, I just didn't believe in the price. 
I understand it is expensive to make makeup here in the United States and to do everything here and not go overseas. I get it, it's expensive. I understand I am currently in the labs, currently working on my own products here. I understand, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it was not a good fit for my brand. I'm not gonna start getting into prices and margins and all that stuff, we're not going there. It just wasn't a good decision for my brand at the time. So if the way I ended it was unprofessional for that, like I am so sorry, but still to this day, I have nothing but love for Makeup Geek and am thankful for everything they've ever done. Like Marlena gave me her Givenchy bag just for no reason. Like we were just sitting in a hotel room and she knew how much I loved it and she just gave it to me. And she was just like here, like she just like emptied it out and handed it to me. She's like, this is yours now. And I cried like, She's a sweetheart and I'm so thankful for everything, you know? Okay, so the last thing about this situation is Marlena made a video talking about the beauty community. I believe it's entitled um, My Truth Regarding the Beauty Community or something along those lines. And in this video, she just starts talking about like Makeup Geek and like their brand not having a good year last year. And in this video, she drops a big number and she says how, you know, she was getting charged $60,000 for a sponsored video, like sponsored content. And I think she's like 20 or $40,000 for an Instagram post. And how like she she couldn't do that. You know, Makeup Geek isn't like this huge global brand and they couldn't afford it. Well, the second that happened, my social media was flooded with people being like, I cannot believe that you charge $60,000. I have done one sponsored video in my entire life and I just closed it. And I put it in the description box down below and I said thank you to Alta for partnering with me on this video. I made it clear I was sponsored. I actually have no problem telling you guys how much I made off of that but I don't know if I'm allowed to and I'm not going to go searching for the paperwork but it wasn't much, okay? It wasn't anywhere near $60,000 or 50 or 30 or 20. It was, it was a humble amount, if you will. <laughs> and I'm going to be very transparent right now because this is the thing that drives me crazy. What I do is my career. This is my job, okay? And some of you guys might not agree with the way I run my job and run my business and run my brand. That's fine. You can run your job and your business however you feel is right. But this is what I'm doing. Keeping it just raw, I could be making so much more money than I am. The deals that I get in my emails, honestly, shock me. Shock me. I would actually love to show you guys emails, but again, Everyone has the confidentiality notice at the bottom of the email, so I don't, I'm not even comfortable sharing emails and blurring out the names and the brands and all that, because still I'm just like, ah. Now don't get me wrong, I have used affiliate links and affiliate codes, and I'm always honest about that and the money that I make from that. I earn commission off of those links and off those codes. That's how I made money from Makeup Geek. Back in the day when I was repping their products like crazy, I had an affiliate link that I put down in the description box. If you clicked on it, I made 10% commission and that's how it was. And then I would have to go in and request a payout whenever I wanted and then the money would get put into my bank account or my PayPal, whatever. No, that is not why I talked about Makeup Geek. I talked about Makeup Geek, be blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm getting way too crazy. I talked about Makeup Geek because I loved Makeup Geek. And the reason I stopped talking about Makeup Geek is not because of <sighs> business going sour or things like that. I'm just gonna keep it real. It's because the products that she started launching weren't making me excited anymore. And I told her that. Even though I could have still been making great money with Makeup Geek through my affiliate link, I just wasn't in it, you know? And I just wasn't like vibing with it as much as I used to. I didn't make a conscious decision like I'm no longer using it. It just kind of like naturally faded away as other things came into the picture. So I wanna go back really quickly and touch base on Marlena saying that she's been charged $60,000. Um, yeah, $60,000 is a pretty normal price for people to charge. I'm just being real. I've never charged that. I have to keep reiterating that over and over and over because I already know the comments are going to be like, I can't believe you charged that. I have never charged that. I've never even taken a dollar from Morphe outside of my earned commission. I've never taken a dollar from anybody. I've never taken a dollar from Makeup Geek outside of my earned commission. Like me talking about it and giving you a code or a link, that is the only way that I've earned my money and then my products and then my views. That's the way I earn my money, that's my business. People who do sponsorships, honey, $60,000 is just the beginning. Like honest to God, I'm not joking with you. Like I might get hate from other influencers and I really hope that I don't because at this point it's like, who cares? Like who cares? But I mean, I sat at a table with a bunch of influencers last year and everyone was talking about sponsorships and brand deals and trips and just stuff like that. And someone at that table told me 
oh yeah, I get paid $70,000 just to mention a product. Like if I am doing a makeup tutorial and I just like use a blush, as long as I talk about it for 30 seconds, I get paid $70,000. And I was like, what? Like I was so shook. I could not wait to tell my mom, my sister, my best friends, everybody. I was just like, oh my God, like because I don't do sponsorships and I made that very clear. I don't think there's anything wrong with sponsorships. And now if you guys are hearing this, you're probably like, bitch, you're crazy. Why aren't you doing them? That's so much money. And the reason why I don't do sponsorships is because I've been offered some that I really want to take because they're products that I genuinely love and I use all the time without a commission code, nothing. I just use them because I love them. And I've had those brands reach out to me and be like, hey, want to work together? Like, we're willing to pay you $50,000 for you to introduce our new foundation. The reason why I don't do it is because it usually always comes with a list of stuff that I have to say and things that I can't say. And I'm just like, I can't do this. I'm not a paid actress. I know my strengths. That's not one of them. Like, I'm just better at just being honest. And if you can't give me like a full organic range, then I can't do it. It'll say things like, you are not allowed to mention this list of brands and like, you know, these are our competitors and you're not allowed to compare it to this product or this product. You're not allowed to use these, these words. And it's like, there's so many rules that I feel like I would just be sitting there with notes like, ah, ah, like freaking out as I'm trying to film the video, like on edge. And I'm like, it's just not worth it. You can send me the foundation. If I like it, I'll talk about it. How about that? Like, cause I just, I don't know. It makes me anxious. Um, if someone were to give me just like free range and be like, Hey, talk about this product, then hell yeah, I would take a sponsorship, but that's not really the way it works. So that's why, um, at least that's not the way it's worked for me. I can't say that that's not how it doesn't work for others. Please understand that when I say certain things like that, sometimes I can just like ca get caught up and not really like articulate my words perfectly the way I want to. And then I get frustrated with myself. I don't mean to group anybody together. When I say someone charged $70,000 to apply blush, like that's one person. That's not everybody. Please keep that in mind. I also know somebody who as of this moment is charging $150,000 a video and living their best life. You know, that's a thing as well. Um, I know that it pisses people off, like how dare they? But I will say at the same time, as someone who doesn't take sponsorships, I really don't see an issue with it because if you're charging $100,000 for a video, but you're making that company a million dollars because of your video, that's 10%. And you should be getting paid. If it's if you're in a contract with them and they're sponsoring you, get your coin, get paid, you know? But um, that's just my experience with this. It's a business, you know? But I just don't wanna see the comments anymore from people saying, how I'm so sponsored and how Marlene is talking about me because no, she's not. Also another thing that I wanna to touch base on because this has been all, all over my social media is somebody who I'm not going to mention because I just I didn't mean to do that hair flip right there on cue, but you know, it kind of worked out. Um, not gonna mention because it's just, they've done nothing but be hateful towards me my friends and my entire community that we have all worked very hard to build. And I'm sure this person works very hard as well and is very intelligent and all that jazz. But if you're not going to support or be kind, neither am I. So anyways, no, well, I'll be kind. I'm gonna be kind, but not support. You get it. This person tweeted saying that they were so thankful for Marlena coming forward and talking about her video and then broke down a list and basically said, this has been my experience. And on that list, this person claimed that brands offer influencers $80,000 to give a negative review about a competitive brand. When I saw this, I was on my phone, I was sitting right here, my kitchen counter, and I literally just dropped my phone and I was like, this is not a thing. This is not a thing. <laughs> like. This is not a thing. And then it got put all over Twitter and so many influencers started coming forward and being like, this is not a thing. This is not real. And of course this person is arguing that it is. That's fine. If one person at one moment said, oh yeah, I'm willing to do this for $80,000. Okay, that's weird. And I do not agree with that whatsoever. Like where's your morals? But this is not a thing. This is something I've never heard of. And I have heard of a lot. I, for some reason, am that person in the industry where people come to and just love to share their shit with. Like, I've been that way my whole life. My whole life, my friends have always called me and been like, ah! I pride myself on being a good friend in that way. You know, so I know, I know a lot about a lot of YouTubers and a lot of just like social media influencers out there. Never once have I heard, heard this. So people have been blowing up my Twitter saying, oh, well now we know why you gave Kylie Cosmetics a negative review with her Kris Jenner collection. It's because you got paid $80,000. And I'm like, 
Okay. Actually, I didn't get paid one dollar, and I got kicked off of her PR list for it. So, <laughs> I just I don't want you guys to think that I'm sitting here defending myself. Like I'm amazing. Um, yeah, I definitely I, I care about money. I care about making money, but I I just don't do it in the way that a lot of people accuse me of. Um, I'm just gonna be real and put it out there. I have been offered a million dollar contract by two different brands. <sighs> I've told. I just literally went from only telling like four people that in my entire life to just like um millions, <laughs> just right like that. Uh, ooh, I feel like I'm real for a while. <laughs> I just want to be real with you guys in this video. I have had two separate brands, completely, completely different brands, come to me and offer me a million dollars up front upon signing a contract, a check for one million dollars to sign a contract. One, the one brand told me. I was gonna be the face of their brand, a brand ambassador. I was gonna be on billboards. I was gonna be in Paris like three times in the next six months. It was this whole thing. This was not, this is not a recent thing. This happened a couple years ago. Um, it was the hardest and easiest decision I've ever made in my life to turn it down. I turned it down that day. I turned it down within like three hours of reading the email. I just sat there and I was like, I can't, I can't. And my mom thought I was crazy. My mom was like, this is why I love you. My mom cried. She's like, I knew it wasn't right. Cause like that's life changing money. A million dollars. Like when you're a little kid, like even still, I was a little kid just a couple of years ago. Like I would sit around and think, what would I do if I won the lottery and had $1 million? Like that's something that you think of. And I've been offered that twice. Another brand offered me a million dollars upfront to sign the contract and then a 15% earning commission code for our collaboration. And that one was hard because that one, I actually wanted more than the other one. And I was like, this is so much money. Like, what the hell? Other YouTubers have collaborated with this brand and they've been very successful collaborations, but it just wasn't right in my gut. It wasn't right. I was like, mm -mm, this is not going to be, this is not going to be something that long-term I'm going to look back at and be like, I'm so glad that I did that. And I'm so proud of that. And I only want to put my name on things I feel that way about and not, it has nothing to do with the money. Like the fact that the Jaclyn Hill palette is one of the top palettes in cosmetic history, like that is the thing that makes me cry of joy. That is the thing that makes me the happiest. When I'm watching TV and I see a makeup artist doing makeup and my palette is in it, or when I see photography, you know, of weddings and I see the artist holding my palette, I'm like, oh my God, like that's what it's about. That's the thing that makes my heart jump for joy. Like I created that palette to be for everybody, for all different skin tones, for all different ages, and for artists, for the everyday woman, for the for the the boy who wants to create drag looks. Like I made that palette with everybody in mind. So when I see so many people using it still after launching it like a year later, that is what it is about for me. Of course the paycheck is great, but that's what it's about. I just wanna say thank you to you guys for being real with me and telling me what it is that you wanna see and what it is that you don't wanna see, what you do like and what you don't, because if it wasn't for you, I would not have what I have right now. I would not have the ability to invest myself, my money and my time into the products that I am creating and the things I have planned in the future and the things I am excited for. So thank you for allowing me to live my dreams and thank you to everything that you do for me and my family, you know, by purchasing my products and by watching my videos. Like it, it really, you guys, it means so much to me and I'm sorry if you've ever felt disconnected from me or felt like I'm not human, like that's not cool. I know that like, you guys should always remember that we're all human out here on camera, but still, you know, like I haven't been very real with you guys recently and connected with you. I've treated YouTube more like a business and I hate that. I honestly want to delete like tons of videos from the past couple of months, but I'm not going to. I'm going to let them sit there and just kind of be like, okay, the past is in the past, moving forward. So yeah, you guys, that is it. Um, I just want you to think that everyone in the beauty community is all bad. I know that the beauty community is up in flames right now and it kind of feels like every man is out for themselves and it sucks. And just to be totally real, this is why I live in Florida. And please don't try to sit here and like rip this video apart and be like, oh, well in this she's talking about Manny and this she's talking about Laura and this she's talking about Jeffrey and this she's talking about, no, please don't do that because that's not what I'm doing. When I talk about like, people in general. I'm talking about people in general. I've met a lot of influencers, ones that I've never posted on Instagram or Snapchat or, or or YouTube. Like I'm talking about a lot of people. And there's a lot of really 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 good ones out there, but there's also a lot of fake ones out there. And please don't let the fake ones give us a bad name. Please, please. And I'm sorry that I've given you a bad name or a bad taste in your mouth, but I am every single day trying to be better and trying to grow and trying to make my channel the best that it can be and be the most honest and real with you. So, yeah. That's it. I really hope that I got my point across. I really hope that when I sit down with a glass of wine and start editing this, that I'm not like, ah, oh, shit. 
I forgot something so important. I hope that I get everything across, but if for some reason there's something that I forgot, I will list it down in the bottom bar below. But I have spoken my piece with everything. I'm not gonna get on Snapchat, defend myself. I'm not gonna try to respond to people and be like, that's not true when they come after me. Say what you want, think what you want. I'm just giving you the real. I love you guys so much and I'm so thankful for you. Even when you are giving me constructive criticism and giving me like a little verbal spanking, I really do appreciate it. You guys always being honest and telling me what you want to see and I will take notes and I will move forward and I will be better. So I love you guys. So thank you so much for supporting me and for watching and I will see you in the next one.